I don't care nothing about no H, I'm trippin' gettin' sick I don't care about no nigga, cause these niggas just be flames I don't stun nobody, bitch, he do that, that's a man See we drippin' like the fox, and I just put on my pretend Nigga, I was selling drugs, bad with niggas, they was What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Only One KDB, and I'm back with another video. On today's video, bro, we got co stars who hated each other off camera, bro. Now, if you're new to the channel, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Turn on that post notification bell so you get notified. I drop another banger, bro. Now, I know one set of one group of co stars who hated each other off camera was Drake and Josh, bro. I ain't gonna say they hated each other off camera, but they just wasn't cool like everybody thought they was. Because we thought we they was the best of friends when we was watching Drake and Josh. I'm like, God damn, they bonding real good. I think they good friends off camera and shit, but. Turns out they wasn't, bruh. But uh, we finna get to the video, mate. If you're new to the channel, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Turn that post notification bell. And let's get it, bruh. Adam and Jamie from Mythbusters. I don't know who the fuck these two people other. is. Jamie and I don't get along very well. That's not a secret. Either. Who is Adam and Jamie? Like, what show is they from? Somebody let me know down in the comments. While Drake and Josh weren't exactly buddies either. We made this thing that I heard people about really love, but maybe we weren't that close. However, let's begin by talking about Leonardo DiCaprio. And Honestly, I thought Drake and Josh was like actual brothers. Like, when I was little, I thought they were related for real. I don't know why I thought that, bruh. Don't get on me in the comments, bruh. I really thought they was related, bruh. Like, all jokes aside, bruh. I really thought they were like brother and brothers, bruh. I was about to say brothers and sisters. <laughs> But yeah, I thought they were brothers, bro. Claire Danes, who ironically played the inseparable lovers Romeo and Juliet. Okay. Prior to filming the movie, the actors had spoken very highly of one another. Claire Danes is the most fantastic young actress I've ever come across. However, in his early days, Leo would always pull elaborate pranks on his co-stars, which was appreciated by some people on set, but despised by others like Claire Danes. He okay. tried to pull multiple pranks on Danes when the cameras weren't rolling, and the young actor wasn't having it. It's rumored that the young actress found Leo a little immature. For the very same reason, DiCaprio found Danes to be uptight and overly serious, and as a result, according to some sources- I ain't gonna lie, how would y'all feel about that? Like, a co-star, like, doing pranks and shit off camera like bro i i ain't gonna lie i get annoyed too like bro you childish but like chill out bro especially if we, ain't, we don't really know each other like that we just working together like i just met you type shit like bro stop doing all that childish prank shit nigga god damn nigga i'm trying to be serious and you bullshit but yeah bro so i feel where she coming from a little bit the pair barely spoke to one another when not filming scenes together. Roughly one year later, Danes was offered but turned down the lead female role in Titanic, with some speculating that she was simply uninterested in doing another film with DiCaprio. Despite Damn. this, the two have always talked highly of one another in public. The dude is a genius. He's been a genius for decades now. Which wasn't the type path shit, taken by shit. Kevin Smith after figuring out that Bruce Willis was a complete and utter dick. The two had agreed to collaborate on a 2010 That's Tracy movie Cop Out, and two years prior in 2008, Kevin Smith praised Bruce Willis for being his favorite actor and biggest inspiration. However, as the two began no, I'm, I'm tripping, working I'm tripping. together, I'm, I'm Kevin Smith geeking. realized he should have never no, met his hero. Despite Smith being the film's director, Willis refused to take any direction, with Smith later stating, I was going at it like Bruce, do it like this. I was directing Bruce the way I direct everybody else. And Bruce was right. like, I've been acting like Bruce Willis for 25 years. Do you really think there's anything you're going to tell me that I don't know? At a later point during filming, Bruce Willis Damn. threatened to punch Kevin Smith, after which Willis had to be separately photoshopped into the movie's poster as he refused to turn up to the photo shoots. On top of this, For Willis real? failed to attend the party celebrating the movie's completion, where Kevin Smith made a toast stating, I want to thank everyone who worked on the film, except for Bruce Willis. In a 2013 interview, he, bro, Willis clapped back bro. by stating, Poor Kevin, he's just a whiner, you know. We had some personal issues about how we approached work. I don't have an answer for him. I'm never going to call him out and lay him out in public. Sometimes you just don't get along, although this isn't the end of the story. Damn. After Willis was recently diagnosed with aphasia, Kevin Smith took to Twitter writing, long before any of the cop-out stuff, I was a big Bruce Willis fan. So this is really heartbreaking to read. He loved to act and sing and the loss of that has to be devastating for him. I feel like an asshole for my petty complaints from 2010, so sorry to BW 2010 is family, crazy. which is a much nicer ending compared to that of Sylvester Stallone and Richard Gere. The two met whilst filming a movie called The Lords of Flatbush. West Yo, they had like, they used to, they used to have like silky smooth hair like how do you get your hair like that bro can anybody let me know because i know back in the day they used to have that like hairstyle but i'm trying to get my shit like that bro you know what i'm saying 
I, I have all the bitches. I already got all the bitches now, but just imagine me with that silky smooth hair. I'm not bullshitting, bro. I'll take your girl, bro. It's all good, though. You can have a back when I'm done, but I'm just saying, like, if I get that hairstyle, bro, it's over with. Stallone instantly disliked Gear's demeanor stating, we never hit it off. He would strut around in his oversized motorcycle jacket like he was the baddest knight at the round table, <laughs> although the real argument came when the two were eating lunch together. Stallone Why stated, I was eating a hot dog and he climbs in with a half a chicken, covered in mustard with grease nearly dripping out of the aluminium wrapper. I said, that thing is going to drip all over the place. He said, don't worry about it. <laughs> bro, this shit sounds suspect, bro. It's crazy how you were in this, bro. It sounds a little bit suspect. I ain't gonna lie, bro. He said it was dripping all over the place. Then you put a hot dog on the fucking screen. And then you said he... It just sounded weird, but I ain't gonna lie. Got it. Which was followed by Richard Gear spilling grease all over Stallone's pants. No, As a result, had me Stallone quote up. elbowed him yeah, in the we side of had the head. Box. After which the director chose to replace Richard Gear with a different actor altogether. Despite this taking place more than 50 years ago, Stallone has stated to this day he seriously dislikes me, which is an ending also shared by years? Ariana Grande and Jeanette McCurdy after their one and oh, I ain't know they had beef. I want to hear about this season of Sam and Cat. When the show came to an end. In 2014, Ariana Grande made an extensive heartfelt twit longer, thanking everybody involved in the production, except for the other main co-star, Jeanette McCurdy. This implied that the two weren't as close as the show suggested, which was confirmed at a later date when Jeanette stated the following. She would have to miss work because she'd be, she, she was being pulled in all directions, so she's gotta do radio shows, she's gotta do the Billboard Awards, the Grammys. She's performing with at the Grammys, and I'm like acting on the show with a box because they decided that like for that that week, she sh her character needs to be trapped in a box so she can go perform yeah. at the Grammy. As a result of this, Jeanette would write, Ariana misses work in pursuit of her music career while I act with a box. I'm pissed about it and I'm pissed at her, jealous of her, before expressing further jealousy in her memoir by attacking- Why she was jealous? That's some hating ass shit. Why you mad because she performing at Grammys and getting awards and all that kind of shit? She ain't got time to be acting all the time, bro. You supposed to be happy for, proud of it clapping for things of that nature but nah you wanted to be on some hating that's crazy though bruh that's crazy ariana's upbringing ariana grew up in boca raton florida an incredibly wealthy idyllic town with a healthy mom who could buy her whatever she wanted whenever she wanted gucci bags fancy vacations and chanel outfits Jeanette's hatred toward ariana always felt pretty pathetic however the feud between will smith and janet hubert reached a whole new level of okay. jealousy janet played will smith's auntie in bel-air and took an instant Yo, to to will smith, as she felt it was he'd been given a tv show at the age of 22. Will Smith later stated, I can straight up say that Janet Hubert wanted the show to be the Aunt Viv of Bel Air show. She said once, I've been in the business for 10 years and this snotty nosed punk comes along and gets a show. To her, I'm the Antichrist. Bro, why y'all always hating, bruh? Get the hate out your heart. Why y'all hating on Will like that, bruh? Why y'all hating in general, bruh? Hating ain't good for you, bruh. First fucking, uh... Jeanette McCurdy was hating on Ariana Grande. Now this lady hating on Will, bro. Why are you hating for, bro? This good. This would go on in the industry, bro. Y'all just be hating on each other. Like, god damn, this motherfucker got the opportunity and I didn't, bro. Look at this motherfucker. Just be side eyed and everybody. Like, what's wrong with y'all, bro? Y'all need to tighten up. While Alfonso Ribeiro, who played Colton, also noted Janet was painful to work with. There were days when we were all on set and she would literally go off on people, and they got to a point by the time the second season came around where we're like, this is unacceptable. As someone who was seen as difficult, Janet was offered significantly less money to appear in the fourth season, she encouraging her to quit, which is exactly what she'd do. However, this only increased her resentment toward Will as she'd state, there will never be a reunion as I will never do anything with an a-hole like Will Smith. He is still an egomaniac and has not grown up. This constant reunion thing will never ever happen in my lifetime unless there is an apology which he doesn't know the word. Despite stating that there wouldn't be a Fresh Prince reunion, it did eventually happen in November 2020 where more than 30 years later, Janet was still convinced that Will had ruined her life state I hated what you did, I just hated what you did. You took my career away of 30 something years, as Will Smith's comments about her being difficult made it hard for Janet to land work afterwards. At the end of their talk, the two made up and apologized, although Nicki Minaj and Mariah Carey had no interest in what doing the fuck so. Did he do? They'd, they'd appear alongside one another in season 12 of American Idol, where okay, their okay. almost polar opposite personalities began to clash immediately. I'm, Are you country? Are you country? Do you like country? Do you like country? And I kind of feel. 
so like we're and we're so making we're, what I'm making we're, we're comments. Making I'm do. trying to help her. We're trying to help, as well, a, we're trying to help her as opposed to just well, talk about I'm her outfit. Well, I'm gonna continue to speak. Of um, course, go, you well, always we're do. Almost Go actually ahead. In a notable instance, the two <laughs> had this tripping. argument mid-show where. No, oh, ain't that Randy Jackson? I ain't hear about him in a minute. Where bro been at? You know what I'm saying? In every moment. Oh, excuse me. The, 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 the music will you cut can, me can, off if I can. I make. Can I make oh, darling, 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 may I express this to her as a singer? I just feel like what maybe trying to be expressed is just sing from your heart the entire you time, you and your notes will continue to shine. Why she talking over her, her bro? After which Nikki threatened Mariah with violence. Multiple people heard Nikki say, "If I had a gun, I would shoot that." <laughs> Ooh. Leading Mariah to state Why the following. Why is she so violent, bro? Like relax. Unsafe work environment. I'm not gonna take any chances. So yeah, I did hire more security. In response to I would have hired security Clay. too. Nikki would have had me fucked up. Why are you threatening me for, bro? Just cause we don't get along and our fucking uh and our characteristics don't match and the fucking stars ain't aligning like y'all fucking horoscope motherfuckers be saying. Just cause we don't get along, bro. That don't mean nothing, bro. You ain't got threaten to harm me now. God damn, she talking about shooting and everything. She ain't even do nothing that bad. Names. Nikki responded by tweeting, Hey y'all, let's just say Nikki said something about a gun. People will believe it because she's a black rapper. LaMeo, I'll then hit up Barbara and milk it, implying that Mariah had made the story up. Nikki then made another tweet reading, I guess it hurts to have the producers tell you to your face that Nikki is the best judge we've had since Simon, or poor you, keep them lies coming, implying that Mariah was also simply not as good at judging. For obvious reasons, both judges quit the show Damn. after only one season, after which Mariah Kerry stated this. That was the worst experience of my life. I would never want to be involved with it again. With Drake Bell and Josh Peck holding a similar. Drake Bell and Josh Nachos. Let's get to it, bro. This is what we've been waiting on opinion about returning to their most famous show. While it seemed the two had a great time filming Drake and Josh, Drake would take to Twitter in 2017 writing, when you're not invited to the wedding the message oh, is clear. True colors have come out today. Message is loud and clear, ties are officially cut, I'll miss you brother, which is followed by Drake flaming Josh via text for the very same reason. I'm getting married that night and I see these text messages from him like cursing me out, oh, coming wow. for me. I'm like, I'm the night of my wedding. The incident was a sad Damn. moment for fans of the show. However, two months later, they'd make up, apologize, and even post a 12 million view video together, implying that the duo was on good terms. That would be until 2021, when Drake found himself in a bunch of legal trouble, after which Josh made the claim that they were never really friends. Are you guys like not friends? Not really, no. We made this thing that people Damn. really love, but maybe we weren't that close. So That's you guys were never Rockstar, close during dude. the, like when you were filming, Drake and Josh, you were just kind of Co-stars. Obviously, there were times where we were closer than not, but when inevitably the show ended, I mean, we're just totally different kids. These statements have since been criticized, given they'd spent a large amount of time together yeah, outside I of the that. show, uh, with one of these critics being Drake Bell himself, who'd give numerous examples of their Drake got a child. together. That's what bugged me about it. He's like, we weren't friends, we didn't hang out. Your Christmas party, the party that I made. He came all the way to Riverside to support me. Josh is clearly trying to distance himself from Drake's sketchy legal situation, given Josh is still actively booking movie roles in an industry where reputation is everything. There are obviously mixed reports about whether or not they liked each other as co-stars, although it seems obvious that they're now no longer on speaking terms and neither are the two main hosts from Mythbusters. Adam Savage and Jamie Heineman hosted the show for more than 12 years, I don't know after which an article is. was published reading, the Mythbusters always had an amazing secret weapon. They can't stand each other. The article referenced an interview from Entertainment Weekly in which Jamie stated, we like to point out we've known each other for 25 years and never once sat down to have a dinner alone together. We sort of managed to tolerate each other. I think it's probably safe to say that continuing our on-screen relationship in front of the camera is probably not happening. To back this up, Adam stated this. No, I don't think Jamie and I will continue to work together on other projects. Jamie and I don't get along very well. That's not a secret. Yeah, I like that hat, my him boy. Where you get it from? It's not a secret they've held, as it was mentioned while the show was still running. We are not friends. We tend to drive each other batty. Uh, we have Bad. never in the what you mean about years that? we've known each other had dinner alone together. Our very different personalities means that we spend a lot of time in sort of conflict. Periodically, their behind the scenes animosity spilled out onto the camera. What kind of seconds were you counting there? Um, yeah, two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. What kind of seconds are those? Who counts like that? So it's no surprise Nigga, why that Adam you got that also state this. There's a lot of fighting on camera. We got really mad at each other, like really significantly 
vitriolically angry. We drive each other nuts every day. We get frustrated with each other on a daily basis. However, the reason they're so proud of their awful friendship is because it's also their key to success. The friction between Jamie and I has an integrity to it and a chemistry to it. We have respect for each other. We also drive each other absolutely batty. We're not afraid to say something that will hurt the other's feelings because we don't care, Savage says. We consider it a point of... Now, this is the second time he said baddie. What the fuck do that mean? We drive each other baddie. And it's spelled B-A-T-T-Y. What the fuck is that? What is baddie, bro? Can y'all let me know, bro? I'm tired of shit, bro. That's why I, I got low energy, but... Let's continue. Right, that the right idea always wins. It doesn't matter whose it is. It's a working relationship based purely on respect and mutual gain, with their unconventional approach resulting in unconventional success as one of the most popular shows in TV history. But yeah, bro, that's gonna do it for the video, bro. If you enjoyed that reaction video, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Turn that post notification bell. I, I appreciate y'all. Y'all been showing me mad love, bro. And yeah, bro, we finna get out of here. We finna get out of here, bro. Make sure y'all like the video. Make sure y'all subscribe. Turn on that bell so you can get notified when I drop another banger, bro. Because we gonna be dropping bangers all winter, all summer, all spring. No days off. But yeah, bro, I'm out of here, bro. Appreciate y'all, boys.